So the point of today's session is, as I was thinking, I felt like, I felt like I got tired of thinking in my own head and I wanted to do a strategy session, but I always do it with myself. So I draw everything up myself and I decide what it's gonna look like. Normally, with a strategy session, it could be for a new business, existing business, depending on where you wanna go, what you wanna do, or what you wanna focus on. So this strategy session, I am my opinion from talking to you lot, I think two things that I wanna focus on is brand identity and revenue goals. And I'm um, hitting our revenue goals and how we can do that. And I think brand identity is important for all three of us because like Satara has different facets going on, you do as well, especially if you start the other thing which you talked about last week. And for myself, I wanna switch over completely to VA training and not be known as a VA. So really pinpointing that and um, mapping out what it would look like to market to those specific people, talk to those people, create content for those people, and then set a revenue goal so that we can um, figure out how we're gonna get to the revenue goal every week, every month or whatever. So if you have other things that you want to touch on, we can do that. Like something else has been in your way or bothering you or something that you really just can't figure out, then we can touch on that. But also the point is we all have knowledge mm -hmm. of our different types of businesses. We all understand right now how businesses work and we can learn from each other. And we can hot seat each other too. Like put, we can hot seat just anything that you need to do or say or you need help with, you could just, we can talk about that. So initially in my brand in my um, strategy sessions, they start I have a I have like a work work booklet. So the person would normally get it beforehand and in there does talk about your ideal client, all the bases of your mm -hmm. mission statement, mm -hmm. your vision statement. But either way I still think that's important mm -hmm. because that still guides you when when you go like let's say to brand identity. Mm -hmm. You still have to understand you know, your mission, your vision always stays the same, your mission can change, right? So like different things like that. Um, and then rate calculations and different, like those are things that I normally put in that worksheet. But <clears throat> we, you may not need that because you may already be past that stage or you may want to work on it or you may not be clear on your vision or your mission. So that's why I think it's a good idea for us to come together because I was like, well, we're all three got businesses. Um, we really could all be millionaires. And we just, if we work together, instead of keep going to outside sources, then I think it would be better mm -hmm. if we combine the knowledge mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. I agree with the financial goals and the brand identity. Mm -hmm. And I believe that what we do not have in the brand identity could be a goal to get for when we come back. We can share what it looks like and that could be a goal to position ourselves so that at least, you know, we all, all have the same type of foundation. What's yeah. good YouTube, it's your girl Sue. Back today with another, another video. You know me, I'm on a journey from unknown to unforgettable. So today I am doing a strategy strategy session and I have some people with me. I got my sister there and my mom there. As you can see, entrepreneurship runs in my family. So mm -hmm. we're here to work together to try and get a, a clear vision on what we're trying to do by the end of this year. So let's go. If I were to say what my brand is, like if I say Say what you said again. So we have multiple notebooks um, that do things, multiple journals. I actually started this new one for this strategy session because it's gonna lead, lead into Ignite. I'm gonna bring them all together. So, um, and I have some other workbooks that I've been using that I will refer to because they have things in there that I have identified that will be my, my guide instruction. That I just need to build up on. Yeah. Okay. Identity as part of if, if I look at the one of the ways that I can look at it, break it down is what it is that I want to um trademark 
Because when you trademark, those are the things you have to use over and over, right? That's part of your brand, right? So for like Restoration House of Ministry, I just said, I was writing it out. It's like, I could just use RHMI, use Restoration House Ministry International written out because there are other Restoration House Ministries. But RHMI, I could definitely bring trademark that and I could put anything else after that. So are you basing your trademark based in Bermuda or outside of Bermuda? For now, in Bermuda, and then I'm going to go outside. So why can't you just do R? So you're saying you're going to do RHMI? Right, I'm not finished, right? So RHMI, right? RHMI, Tutor and Santa, RHMI, whatever. Um, It was like three things that I had to mission house, school house. If I go back to my original, it would be the school house, music house, and the... um. Whatever house, right? And um, so, so you want to I could. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I understand. You want to trademark each one of those things? No, RHMI. Just, just RHMI. For now, that's one thing. Okay. Right? That's one thing. Um, and then I was thinking as I was doing the, uh, as I was thinking about um, the school piece, if I, because remember I used to have RHM schoolhouse, I could do RHM t tutorial center or learn, no, learning center, but underneath the learning center, there is Terry, okay? That's the um, the Empowerment and Restorative Institute, which is the online school, okay? And so this is the breakdown that you were talking about. And then um, also underneath the um, learning center, something that I have not addressed for a long time is adult learning. Adult learning support, the adult support, right? Because last year, when I, as I was doing those courses, it was I was using um the learning center, RHMI learning center, right? But I could bring that back underneath Terry, and then have Terry, which would do the um the online courses free and purchase, and um anything that can be purchased. I could use that website, like for the digital downloads, I could use that. I've already been using that as for digital downloads. That's where the um, vision board is. Okay, so I'm gonna put everything underneath there as a digital download because it is an online school. But then when I have to do the face-to-face, -face, um, if I do the face-to-face, -face, because there is a need for the adult learners out there, right? That too can come underneath RHMI Learning Center. So that's me, the teacher, because people still ask me, do you have a homeschool? People still inquire, do, uh, is my homeschool open? And you know, do you do GED? There's so many three things that come up all the time, right? And, but I need to push Terry, that's the new thing. So um, as I continue to look at my brand, uh, that if I look at those things that you can bring up, the words, the symbols, the songs. So when I said poof, when I say poof, not today Satan, uh, you know that, I, I think I could bring that. Because people repeat that. That's, they repeat it and they repeat it exactly how I say it. So, like, isn't that part of my brand? It's associated with your brand, but I think, okay. I think your, um, Focusing on what it looks like or sounds like rather than what it is. So it will be, like I said, how does the world see you? Do they see you as an educator? Do they see you as a minister? They see me as both, yeah. And do you want them to see you as both? It, I mean, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. I would say. What you said, what you said, not to, not to then say in proof. In proof. Mm. So that would be something that keeps you consistent. So mm. do you say that when you're teaching or when you're doing ministry? Ministry, every morning. So you do that when you're doing ministry. So mm. that would be something that people would know you for. Oh, just to not to say, not, not to then say in really. And then they'll, they'll figure out, they'll go on to figure out other things that you do as well. So if you just keep doing that consistently, that will help with your branding. Okay. But it will necessarily, that doesn't mean you need to brand that. Okay. It All will right. help with your, that, the branding of your <clears throat> business minister, Eugenia Robinson. Mm.
Okay. But then that's where marketing comes in. That's why people put branding and marketing together. Mm-hmm. So once you understand your brand, then you market that. So if that's what you want to market and push out there, then that's when you're like, well, how can I market this? No. Okay. Do you want to put it on a shirt? Do you want to hashtag it? Do you want to, mm-hmm. you know, that's what it's called. Okay. Um, um, taxed. And um, actually, both of them have the different. The um, they both have different tax and different colors. RHMI is royal blue. If Harvard School and um, R um, Virginia is the red, the black, the white. So with a burst of yellow. So what's the ministry? Royal blue and blue. Mm, okay. Right. Um. Uh. So I have the fonts. The fonts. I know the fonts. I know the fonts. Um. So now when I go to brand, or not brand. Um. Yeah, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do the trademark with RHM, RHMI, RHMI, right? Uh, yeah. Do you plan on incorporating? What's that? You know, business wise, I think that I haven't thought about it that far because if what I want, what I should do, I should have the nonprofit first at the head. So that if anything else comes underneath that, like Eugenia L. Robinson is like subsidiary of um, the ministry, not Eugenia L. Robinson and then the ministry come underneath that. Because I can, I want to, since I can incorporate well, like as a church, actually I'm gonna learn about that. I think that. that that's something that I can learn about. Like how all these guys are starting the new churches, right? I think that is some, um, I actually think it's a game changer, but I think it costs money, but I think it's, it's worth doing for small black businesses to incorporate and have the LLCs on the, right. any different, any different ways, even if you do a trust under that, or the trust in the incorporation, um, like how I have like how I wanted to do art and buildings. Mm-hmm. Then I have art and international group and under that comes a few other things. And then they will hold the shares for the other company because it protects you anyway. Right. But it costs money to do but it protects you. Yeah, a lot of money. But and that's not why so it's important to have um the uh the boards and all of that. So that you know But I think in Bermuda that's where you lose all they don't encourage you to start an LLC. Mm. They well, just they don't you. encourage LLCs at all. They just do LTDs. Limited. What they call limited? L- mm-hmm. Limited. Uh, I don't know. You're supposed to have a board of directors. But then they just tell you, let's see, tax commission, that's your number, pay the taxes. Yeah. Right. They don't encourage you to go further mm. out of a small business, which in turn doesn't protect you. I actually saw that um, Pink Sands. Mm-hmm. The entertainment company. I remember when they first started their LLC. They um bought their LLC. I didn't see that they've been doing a lot of work, but I see they're doing the that Bermuda VIP thing. Um, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, just working here, me and here watching all these people structure their businesses. It's amazing. It's amazing to me, even as much as I thought I knew already. Because I'm all. This is so. This is where getting information from multiple people does not add up mm-hmm. in Bermuda. She's a lawyer. Because a because when I went to to BEDC, I said, "Oh, I want to start an LLC." They're like, "No, you can't do that here, or it's not recommended to do that because we do LTD, so it doesn't make sense for you to do an LLC." Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, and then they said, "Oh, well, if you want to do an LLC." You have to go to the um to, nope. They said you have to go to speak to someone at BMA. This, that, and the other. So I know people that work at BMA. So I said, hey, do you know of anything about how to register LLC in Bermuda? I was told I need to come to BMA. Can you direct me to the right person at BMA? And she was like, we don't do that here. 
Really and I'm just like, just, so why be. is the comp? No, but this is my point that this is where BEDC, this is where people go to for the information. to get information, and this right. is the information that they're giving me. We don't know that. So it's just That's like, why? I don't know. That's how I feel like that's how a lot of young people get discouraged because they're trying to get information and they're always being given the incorrect information or they're being pushed around to multiple places and never mm -hmm. getting an accurate answer and, and, and the therefore thing they is, give you up. Know the right questions to ask, ask because you're seeing and you see structures out there. Uh, to me, so they help when they like, they help when they want to help, they have the few. Okay, so. And I'll see it is. So yeah. how does one? She'll call it right here. I'll see it will be there. That will be a while ago to show you that time. That's, that's July seventh. That's just. Yeah, like, oh, this is ca I know casual. She could literally do it. I mean, they may cost about six grand. Oh, I'm not even kidding. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 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 Yeah, a girl, a white young girl helped me when I first met mom there to her. At Albuquerque? <clears throat> I think cost a little bit. I haven't, I didn't even really start it, but it's still would be, um, let me write it up there. Mm -hmm. oh, let's go to Okay, so let's just start with one. Which one do you feel you can probably generate income from first? I need to push the, the digital vision board. So the vision board, so let's just focus on that. Mm -hmm. So how much would you like to make per month from right. the vision boarding? Just set a number. Oh, let's say, let's say one grand. Let's split it up to one grand or 1500. Let's do 1500. 1500. So you want to make 1500 per month from mm -hmm. the vision boarding. Mm -hmm. How much does it cost to hold a vision boarding session? The, well, the digital one is $60 each. How much does it cost for you to hold it? For me, um, I had, what did I have? 350 or 400, um, up to eight people. When I take everything. So right. let's say it's four hundred dollars per session with you there, right? That and that's for how many hours? That's going to probably be about four hours. So that'll be four fifty. So, so I have a question. Are you fifty dollars per? So, yeah. so I have a question. Are you only worth one hundred dollars an hour? No, um, I just I think it's one fifty. If I want to do this, so you said it's four hundred dollars for eight people. Just a minute. Just a minute. For, Sit on. My goal was three hours, right? But I find that it takes four to five hours. I have to learn to keep it to three hours, right? You have to understand that. So let's say it's going to be three hours with me actually working about an hour of the people doing the presentation, okay? So it should be like 450, 150 an hour. Which would include me bringing some supplies. No, Zay, four fifty is how much you're gonna make back, or how much? How much do you spend? That's what I think she's asking. How much does it cost you to host the vision board workshop at first? That's what she was asking. Mm, I haven't broken it down like that because. Okay. So okay, so you don't have that. Let's go through it. So, do you have to find a location to do this? No, no. This is the one. This face to face. You see me doing her right. This face to face is when people bring me to their location. They have the location. They have their own food. I'm just showing up with okay, my so handout. Okay, so you don't have to be concerned with a location no, or anything no. like that. For that one, I would do once a year. I would do that in February every year, where I host one and bring people in. Okay, that's not all we're talking. About. Okay, right. So Focus we're talking on about this, this one. Mm -hmm. So, do you already have a location? 
you don't have to worry about that. That's mm -hmm. not a course for you. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to bring? I'll just bring the session? handouts, the handouts. I'll what take- What does that consist of? Mm, a handout, and I'll take, I hope I haven't been to one. She's never been to one. I've been to oh, one. been working. Yeah. Well, you gotta come to another one. I just did one at my I'm, mastermind. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, uh, let's figure out the pricing first. I know, but I'm saying you will also have a good understanding if you, if you right. rent one too. So I, I, I have a handout that I already have a handout that's already done. It will be a matter of me printing that. I just saw it is in here somewhere. Me printing it. Having it for the people, I usually customize so it's the cover a page. Out. So it's just a printout. Just a printout of okay. a couple of pages. See, this is this is. That probably just costs and this is the five and five ten dollars to print it on. Fun. Do for you the, do okay? Well, moving on to the next thing. The first thing. So let's write this on. Okay, let's write this on. The first thing you need to host it is your printout. Right. Okay. So let's write that down first. First thing needed is your print out. Mm -hmm. Handbooks. Mm -hmm. Handbooks. Mm -hmm. What else do you bring? I take um magazines. stickers, magazines, okay. stickers, old supplies. Your yeah, old supplies. No, write down each supply, stickers. Yo, pain in the neck. I'm already did this. Magazines. Stickers, um, glue, sprinkles, um, stickers, uh, crayons, and everything sorted into little containers. Um, pans, pencils. So people really just have to show up to the location. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what would you say the rough cost is for all those supplies? And remember, I'm taking this back with me. They don't take it. It's mine. I'm not. Okay. So I would say like this in Bermuda costs about, it costs a lot. Um, let me see. I would probably say I probably spent like $500. Per session. No, no, that's what I'm saying. These are reused. Right, but my thing is, say, with with COVID, so to say, everything has to be single use. So say you buy, uh, what Marcus comment? No, I'm just, I'm just trying to. So look, just, this is what I think. If we if we estimate it to like five vision board things a, a year, let's say these supplies equal up to about one twenty five throughout the year. Oh, about one twenty five. If you if we divide right. it by. Part you part party. Right. That's how it probably got broken down. Mm -hmm. If you do it, okay, she spent like five hundred. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, she spent like five hundred years. So let's say every time she shows up is one hundred and twenty-five for supplies. Right. Twenty dollars for the printouts. Twenty. Okay, got you. Four fifty for myself. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And transportation, which is usually like about eighty dollars because I catch access. Right. So now how much that adds up to? Okay, got you. She's good at this. Five, ten, seventeen, six, six hundred seventy-five. All right. So the four fifty is just your profit, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's your new price. So now how much What's your price? Charge? Oh, so if I decide no, divide no, no. this by no, no, eight. No. What's the price there? What's the What's the total you said? Four seventy five plus the four fifty. Four fifty is included. Yeah. yeah, include the four fifty. Is there four six seventy five? Six seventy five. So you might as well just run it up to seven hundred. It's right. seven hundred dollars per session. Right. They can divide that amongst themselves. Right. You is a minimum of eight people. You said mm -hmm. right. So a minimum of eight people. The cost is seven hundred dollars. That's less than a hundred dollars per person. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, that's about right. And I think that's a, I think and you know why I think that's a good price well. because it's a good experience from from that and I can experience it myself. The actual vision board is not like it's not a regular vision board what people think. Mm -hmm. I think it's the experience that you give them with going through the process of that. Mm -hmm. So it's worth the money. Mm -hmm. But that she said that she had everything on a stick. I said no 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 no. All right. Okay, your turn. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Let's go. Your turn. What is your, let's yeah, start with, well, I mean, what women just talking, so anything else has came to your mind? Well, what? you have been, about, well, I first read up there. This girl said, I just saw your daughter. I said, okay. Yeah, so oh, is that time? She said, no, that wasn't her name. 
<laughs> it's my YouTube, which is now called Unlearn. You changed the name? Yep. This girl be changing names like underwear. No, because I had it's to think about fun. it. What is my brand? My brand is not my name. My name is my name, but my brand is I'm on a journey from unknown to unforgettable. Okay. So that's why I changed it to unknown to unforgettable. Empowerment and rest. So that way, that's no, important. my target audience, so to say, would be someone who's trying to get somewhere or doesn't know where to start. So they can go oh, like, oh, look, this is where she started. And then watch every single video to see where I've got it. Okay. So that's why the name changed. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other main thing is the black accent as well. So that's, those are my two main things. And then after this is established, then it'll be the 441 brand. Where does the podcast fall under? And the what's the name of it? The Black Accent Club Podcast. Okay. Yeah. So this will also be podcast. So those are my two. What did you have before that? I feel like there's something else I'm missing. You had the When she started to do the. the no. When she did the um, when you was just doing the quotes before. What was that on the, the black accent? The black accent spoken. But then maybe you have one with your name attached. The SR black accent. That's what it's called. That's the app. It's SR black accent as well. And that's it. It's not another it. page. No, that's it. So all my social medias for the black accent club are SR black. I felt like it was something else. No, no, no. no. Okay. And the reason is because I can't just get Black Accident Club, but if I put SR, then that adds also adds ownership to. Right. Because no What's one can the, steal my unit. What you got on the end? Oh, that's club. Okay. Yeah. Everything. Okay. So, everything. So, mm -hmm. the only thing that's not exactly that is Twitter because it's too long. Okay. But it's still an SR, BLK Accident Club or something like that. Okay. For, for the Twitter. Uh -huh. So, when it comes to this, mm -hmm. I'm just. Like, I only really just signed back into my Instagram because in order for my YouTube channel to grow, I have to post on social media to promote it. So, mm -hmm. my goal is one post per day for this. So, is your brand identity um, the same for both? Is, are, you, are you branding? Is your brand the same for your YouTube channel and the Black, Black Accents Club? For unforgettable to un unknown to unforgettable. So this is one, and this is technically two. Okay. So but two different brands. But it's me doing this because it's a part of my journey. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. So they're the same brand. Mm -hmm. Basic. Yeah, basically yeah, they same all brand. It's just a. So why you just didn't put the black as all black accidents and then put the YouTube under that? Because I want that, I want to keep this separate in the aspect of so I can create this straight up like a a, a membership versus That's this is me that. and my journey okay. to creating this big business. Okay, I got it. Now. Yeah. All right. So this is my personal brand. Mm -hmm. So I suppose I could just put that personal. And I think that's what I was trying to get to, Mama, when you were, when the, all the ministry stuff was coming under your name. Right. That's why I think I was saying that's because your personal brand. Right. And I want to keep it separate. My personal brand and my so business. So if people right. come to ask you to speak, right. when they come to ask you to speak, right. you can touch on ministry, talk about education. But they would tell me what the topic is, and I, and like my overall brand would be empowerment and restoration. Okay, so yeah. So right now, my YouTube is monetized. My issue mm -hmm. is I stop posting. So mm -hmm. the least you post, you're not gonna make money. So if I, so, so let me write two. Is one on YouTube video per week. That way, I have something good every every week. So I have something every day. That should lead people to my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. There's a new video every week. So that's the goal for my personal brand right now. 
Um, I have like 20 videos that just need to be edited. So I finally found that's an editor cool. to work with. Oh, that's cool. So he's doing like one video every two to three days. Mm. And I'm still trying to record a minimum of four videos per month. Oh, okay. So this month I'm already got my four videos that I've recorded. So ultimately I can go up to two videos per week. But I don't want to do that just yet. Not I want to get more in the bank so I'm mm -hmm. not in a rush to always try and make content. <clears throat> Because I'm glad you got somebody help you get added to. Yeah, because finally I was able to find someone. So that, and then when it comes to the Black Accents Club right now, I actually just basic I just finished a um a blueprint course. I think I told you about it. the blue the podcast blueprint course that I bought. So I finally finished right, it. So right reason. now I'm in the process of systemizing my podcast. Any aspect of the way I first did it, I was reaching out by email. I'm alleviating that factor. So I have it as a, as a Google Forms on my website now. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is go to my website, fill out the Google Forms, and then I'll get a notification mm -hmm. of someone wants to be on there. So will you also have that that Google Form right here underneath that? Because you're posting every day her, um, for people to be in the Black Excellence. Do you let them know you also offer that podcast, the opportunity so for them? Where me starting to post again comes in because right. all this time this hasn't been live right. right so what what was that thing that i use um uh that were like on your you, instagram page they can go to your webs um to your link youtube tree? huh link tree yeah link tree i have that yeah. right so and then that so this, to be on my podcast could be one link this. Right. so i have it for this and i also added check out my podcast on this right. i have a podcast you can listen to or it sign up so to be on the podcast i don't have that on there yet because it's actually on your website so you have to go to the podcast website okay. to get it all right i'm not just doing just the form at least not yet mm -hmm. it doesn't mean i can't just have the form straight on my link tree mm -hmm. um so when it comes to the black accidents club the goal is to have this monetized by the end of this year. Okay. Oh, you're getting monetized, yeah. So one <coughs> is YouTube. Okay. So let me write that for you. So a separate YouTube, the same YouTube channel you need. But you're already monetizing that. No, yeah, it's just monetizing. Black Accidents Club has its own YouTube channel. It's going to have channel. its own YouTube channel. So I need a thousand subscribers and four thousand. That's channels. what I need. That's a goal for so me. So monetize, monetizing. Shit. I need to subscribe. I say if I get members, they can subscribe. So one is YouTube. Two sponsors. Three. Should I have it written down somewhere? Hold on. Advertising. You know, advertisers is. Um. What's another way you ask? I have it written down somewhere. I don't know. Definitely, I don't have that paper. You don't have it down here. What you looking for? My list there. Yeah, I called it the Black Accents Club. So the Black Accents Club is gonna have its own YouTube channel. Okay. This whole thing was four dollars and fifty cents. So I don't, I don't know exactly Shit. how you can. Shoot, I have ten ways of how to monetize this crap. So how to monetize what? Yeah. No, she says she what has her ten ways to monetize. Like I have it listed because the guy gave it in the in the course. Oh. So one would be YouTube sponsors, ads, um, uh, affiliate links. That's it. Affiliate. Right, affiliates. Right. Affiliation says, yeah, products. that's a big one, but I'm not Affiliate using it. Products. <laughs> products. Um, yeah, products. Probably uh, some sort of digital so download, like an ebook or something. Um, products, and now uh, she, I just had it in my head too. YouTube sponsors, ads, affiliate links. Oh, what was the word that I just had in my head? Um, what they call it, um, influencers? Not necessarily that, because that's not a way that I can make money. That's where, that's where, that's where mm. I would say that's where the affiliate links come from. Um, and also get the discount code for my listeners. Right, right, right. So they got a discount code and I got a tape. So 
when it comes to the affiliate links, mm -hmm. they recommend taking, um, asking for like 50% for digital products. So if it doesn't take any work for this person to, to do it, if it's an online course, an ebook, or anything like that, they say ask for 50 and then negotiate. Ask for 50 from who? 50% of the money. Of the, <laughs> no, no, not the money, but 50% of the sale from my link. So say money. you listen to my podcast, I have someone that's saying, oh, I have this ebook on how to make $100,000 in a year. Right. So you go as my listener, you go and click that link right. and you purchase that course right. you and it's only online so they don't have to do anything. All this is is an email it's... being sent. I take 50% of that and my listener gets a discount for it. Mm. So and that and that lives forever. So that's where that comes in because I can do an interview say a month from now and the video didn't blow up now, but it blows up two years from now. And his price, and, if, and that particular person's price is going up, then my my price is going up from what I get. Like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's where affiliate links and it's definitely the way it goes. Um, that's what I like about in drive point because the whole affiliate startup is so automatic. Right. Like you ain't never gonna touch it. Right. You don't have to do anything. And the money goes to everybody, and nobody to, gets to distribute. Yeah. So that's. There's definitely five, I can't remember the six one that I was thinking just now. There's definitely five ways that I can monetize my podcast now. Um, so right now, my goal okay. is to get, yeah, this is all just about support. Okay. But mind you, all these ways that I'm monetizing my podcast, I can monetize my mm -hmm. personal brand. Mm -hmm. Everything goes, coincides together. Mm -hmm. Speaking engagements. Yeah, speaking engagements, stuff like that. So this is that. The, I think my goal is to get a sponsor. It takes six hundred and fifty dollars to run the podcast per year. That's an annual fee. Mm -hmm. Say that again. It takes, it takes six hundred and fifty dollars to run the podcast, and that's an annual fee. And that can go up once I start posting more. So this is just at one video per per week. Or so one, we should probably make it a goal for one to be able episode, to sponsor you by that shit. One episode per week. That's what it. That's what it costs. So how do you um build in that course? Mm -hmm. How is that course established? The six fifty. Oh. So that is the um the hosting site oh. for the year. Mm -hmm. That is um what's that other one? Riverside, which is a way for me to film visual um. To, to do interviews with people that are outside of Bermuda. And then I think it's also for um, the tarot one, I think it was, it's written on my whiteboard, I know. Um, what's that thing? Dropbox. So, because I'm not gonna edit my other videos. Cause that, that's, that's mm -hmm. my issue, is that I don't have the time to sit there and edit. So 650 per year covers all of those costs. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually doesn't include the video editor. So I feel like what I need to find now is try and get a video editor that edits everything. Mm -hmm. So they will edit my personal YouTube stuff. Mm -hmm. They will do my reels. Like I have no issue filming everything, but I just need someone to edit everything. So if I could find someone to do all of this, reels, everything, and then all my posts for this, mm -hmm. I'm good. And then uh, back to that course. So that's your first what employee need. that you need to have. Right, that would be my first employee mm -hmm. is a video editor that edits for both of my establishments, mm -hmm. so to say. So you definitely need to generate some income to pay for him. Right. So that's the real question now is how can I generate income right now? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say the first better YouTube. I could pay someone to promote my podcast on YouTube mm -hmm. and get it monetized and then keep promoting it and then I'll keep and when I do the promotions I'll target the promotions to my target audience so well you could promote on my YouTube channel I just need to make it look pretty yeah. <laughs> you just gotta make it look pretty I think you should I actually it. did um started to put my my list in well, I don't have an existing YouTube channel, so I wouldn't I mean, I, I was do, looking at some. I was looking at Cindy Trim's YouTube channel. But I was like, okay. But I think that you should also, or do like, um, like the girl that does money talks. She does the live. I heard of her. Yeah, I heard of her. I don't know her name. I know you just. Country. So 
my so yeah, that's what Snaps is also promoting. Right, so that's what I'm saying. That. So that's that's my thing that I need to do now since the podcast is actually live. I think I like the fact that, you know, the whole thing is, is like the scripture that I'm looking at, um, Proverbs 27, it talks about knowing your flock. You have to know what you have, right? Take care of what you have. Make sure that it's reaching its full potential. And then as you have that, you can move on. Um, and you're able to present it, like you're saying. Now she... She's got an easy flow of everything, like so she gets this money talk person. Not only can this person look at to see what she does, you know, to see if they're a right fit, but um she's coming with some experience and content. Mm. Right. Yeah, so that's what it would be. Right. I think no, And it's very simplified. Because the I'm um, so complicated. That's very simplified. The um <laughs> Jeez. the well, she did not expand on the four four one brand yet. Right, because she's not there yet, even right. though she's touched on it. Yeah. So. Well, see, well, I can it. talk about that because I want to do. I want to have my products ready. Right. right. So I'm gonna do. I'm a, I need to start working on trying to put logos on the front of the hats because I have the hats. I have them so far. Yeah. So I can start with the hats because this is something the product that I physically have. I just need to figure out a way. To put it on the front of the hat. Right. And once I'm able to do that, that's cool. And but then, then you gotta get a machine for that, right? I have a machine. Oh, I, I thought you were gonna, gonna get a bigger one. I okay. just, well, that's not my main focus okay. right now, so I'm not even worried about that. Mm -hmm. So get the hats and then the t-shirts. Mm -hmm. So I like, I think I was mentioned I'm gonna do an order of 200, 200 mm -hmm. t-shirts, mm -hmm. and I can just have them blank, and then I can put my, I can put. The I can one I can also do unknown to unforgettable merchandise as well as the black accent stuff. Mm -hmm. Um the other thing is I just won't be able to do the type of method that I want, if that makes sense. Oh, but it's a star. Because it's not available in Bermuda. I'd rather have a blank than have that. But I could always do this logo in embroidery, but I can't do the black accents that T shirt in embroidery. Okay. Um, I, I think I like that you pull back money products, but, but you learn so much from home. What well, in it? Yeah. But I think I like that you pull back on it because I think Cause it's I just have stuff. to I have to focus on one thing and then go from there. That's that's, Cause that's where I kept getting confused and, and wait, what are you trying to do? Right. And that's exactly. also where I got the clarification when I went to the Black Equity Club. Because mm -hmm. the guy was like, if you don't have a community, you can't sell nothing. Mm hmm so that's why I need to focus on these two because that's two communities. Community. Oh, I still think I like you should essential. do a journal. I still think you should do a. I tell her she a should plan. do a financial no, a financial planner, a planner. Yeah. Yeah, I can do. I can do. Let me let me keep figuring out how I'm doing it, and then hopefully by the next year I should be able to do mm. that. And that could be a part of for my. I think um, also yeah, because that's also something that could be so that you. May not have to touch you to sell that one like Etsy or something. Right. You know right. how you did your first ten k in four months. Maybe if you continue to do your um goals in that four months and setting a financial goal. That wasn't a four month goal. I, uh, whatever goal, <laughs> it just, whenever it, it, just goes, happens to be, it just happened to be done in four months. Right. So, you know, like whatever, put it on a time, pick up. Create your system, create your um pathways, as they some people call it your pathways, mm -hmm. and um explain that and just I like how this person, the um budget thing you gave me, just like how she did hers, right. you do your own. And that's why I need to start posting on my personal Instagram again because it's one thing if I'm just doing it on YouTube, but if I'm not growing on Instagram and Twitter as well, then what's the like? I People think, will gravitate to it, but I mean, it'll help me. It'll also help boost my YouTube. So, what is your community saying back to you? What what type of? We really have a community right now. That's why I'm trying to build one. So, am I the only one? So, how are you comments? speaking to people? How how are you? I mean, what are the avenue other than your YouTube and Instagram and Twitter? Is that the only way you're communicating right now? Pretty much. And are you following more people? Am I following more people? Yes. 
Bohemian Motorola. Oh, you found her just so they can follow you back? No, I don't. I don't. I know that's that's I like keep, two different things. Keep, look at look at Ashra's page. I keep my following low. Right. I only follow I, people I know if that makes sense, or people that are in a position where I want to be, because I'm trying to use Instagram, social media as a whole as a So tool. how do you reach the unknown people? Because you gotta get to the unknown Hashtags, people. Reels, like see, man, with the way. It is now. You don't have to follow the follow for follow map. It doesn't work as much as it used to. Mm -hmm. So all they do is so, have to click that like button, that thumb up button. Yeah. So all you need is the people you. that are say the people that find it. All they need to do is share it. And if people are sharing it, then that sh they're sharing it and they're sharing it and they're sharing it. And that's how more people come to it. But if I'm just following random people, that's not necessarily mm -hmm. getting me the audience that I want. Right. You know, not random so, people. And, and that's why, like with the black ass and stuff, like I had like fifteen hundred followers. I'm just like, that was off the follow for follow method, so that doesn't right. mean these people really want to see this content. So that's why I'm down to like two hundred followers now. Mm. But if I can get people that want to see what I'm doing, they'll mm. be more interactive. Right. And what I'm looking for is engagement, not numbers. Right. Now, I'm going to tell you, one of the persons that looked at my, after um, I went to Felicia saying, she said, the first thing you need to do, you need to unfollow some people and unlike some people. Just like, she said, who are these people? Like That's the, when she looked at my Instagram, yeah. she said, you need to cut that down. She said, every day, she gave me an assignment, every day, every week, go through that and reduce like, it. Like, for me, my stuff is business to business, so mostly people in Carve exactly live. I follow all business people and right. they follow me back. It's not personal people. Or not. Right. But um, for her to build a following, you're either going to start when you go to other people's pages that you follow you because you like what they're doing and you comment on that stuff. Right. But I also mean. look at who else is commenting on that stuff because they're probably in the same position as you. And hashtags. And you may follow have hashtags. to follow them. Because, mm -hmm. or not even follow them, go to the page and like something, like, oh, this right. is that like my stuff. And yeah. they'll go back and realize you lost probably on, the, mm -hmm. on a similar journey. And then they will follow you because the right. unknown people are going to be the people doing exactly what you're doing. They may not have a business, but right. they're going to be searching for the information. Right. right. But that, and the other thing is using hashtags or something. That's how I learned a lot about LinkedIn. The new discovery, even though I'm not, I'm talking about something personal. Um, like when I did prayer, that's when I noticed that there wasn't a lot of prayer things out there. Uh, when I noticed that I really needed to work and build more stuff on prayer. Um, you know, now you got the prayer pranua, prayer erst and all of that. You know, and I was looking looking at that on all the social media platforms. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. I still think you should do like a job or something. Yeah. I'm gonna fix my my drone needs to get I'm fixed up. About her for the because I feel like if I'm in the unknown, I'm forget I'm watching your YouTube on how you're going there. I may want to record it, and I think if you give me something to record it on, then I'll take it over to the black accidents. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? So I'll, record. If she did her own journal, that's all her own journal slash financial. I, I keep saying financial planner because that's what it was about. Yeah, sure. and you're getting very strong in that, so I think that would be good. Yeah, break it. Break it! We are not just going well, to be property. She, even if she journal had a budget, like some budget sheets in it mm -hmm. at the end of it, mm -hmm. that's something that you could probably make yourself even on printable and sell it as drop shipping or however right. they do. But Actually, if you just I, say, oh, look, mm -hmm. let me put up this, get this so you can follow me. Join me on the journey. Mm -hmm. We're gonna become unforgettable, and then from there, when you take them over to the membership, mm -hmm. right? Because they may run out the journal, they may need a new one right. from two thousand twenty-four, right. stuff like that. Oh my God. That's when they now start listening to your podcast. It's like I think that they can, I think that they can go on the journey with you, those mm -hmm. people, and it may only be a little bit, but they can start. Let me throw journey. this out there. Have you thought of doing anything for Black Friday? What about if we all find one product to sell for Black Friday? I don't have no products yet. Okay. Yes, you do. You have your courses. I'm not just going to my course. Okay. <laughs>
Um, no, mama, it's just know. one day. You can. I it's just I one day. I say you can. You could just say, oh, it usually costs this much, but I'll give it to you for the actual. Right, price. but then if they probably would have seen it already. Because right. I already went down the price. But yeah. I can do it as a, I'll do a one hour sale. Well, and that's so one cool. hour, maybe one hour sale. Mm hmm. Gotta do all you can. I like that one hour too. Um, and then I think that's one more thing I'll ask you guys about. Mm -hmm. So the conference that I went to, mm -hmm. the guy that has a social proof podcast, because I'm in his morning meetup program, which is like the the everyday thing on to Friday. His offering for us to be on his podcast for two thousand dollars, right? It may sound like a lot, but people usually pay five figures to be featured on his podcast. Let me finish. <laughs> Shake me here, no, let me finish. So in this, so for me to be on the podcast, it's not me there promoting my business. It's not what other people usually do. It's me basically getting advice, more information on how to boost my business. So you're asking him questions. Yeah, it's more of a Q and A towards that person, and then say, say if I so like you are doing like V A. He would bring someone in that's an expert in that. So no, you're not really asking one person question. You got two people that be able to get all this information. So it's a coaching session. That's yeah, it. basically, yeah. For two thousand dollars for how long? It's like for an hour, hour and a half, and then that gives my business promotion forever. A coaching program is five thousand dollars for like ten sessions. Okay. Each session is an hour. Mm -hmm. I think that's overpriced. What, $2,000 for is that one? Really is it really just you? Also, is it just, so it's just you? It's just me, myself. And an ex part that he brings in? Mm -hmm. I, like I still and say. It also, but for me, because I'm also doing a podcast, right. his age range is higher than my age range. So these people that listen to his podcast may have children that need to listen to my podcast. So how you feel about the people that you already listened to that did this? Have See, they haven't, they haven't heard yet. So that's the only thing, they haven't heard yet. How come he hasn't heard yet? So how he, can he, he only just put this out there last week. He only said, in this community, I'm doing this. If you want to do it, sign up this week. I think so you I still think, need to look at like what he's doing. Three or four people have done it already so far. But I'm not. They haven't heard yet, so I'm waiting to see how they heard before I really make my decision. But in the, in the community, yeah. just ask yeah. the questions. Ask them how long will you really like? Will you obviously they pre-send your questions, right? Everything's just live. Well, live being recorded, but not live out there. Uh, because I don't want I it to be end up being like he could be advertising the other person, advertising him, and you not getting anything in. No, that it's, only, it's literally only that one person. So you would you, you okay? Like so, but you so you're going to use two thousand dollars, right? No, two thousand dollars. With that, you're saying you can get to talk to two experts, mm -hmm. and then you also got promotion because he'll obviously right. it'll be promotion. Mm -hmm. But is that different than you taking seven fifty and sitting down with somebody and really getting one on one what you need? You mean or, a, a actual mentor or a coach? Yeah, not a mentor. I well, it's the new first, to me. The first thing that you said was to be featured on his podcast is charging two thousand dollars. That's like somebody saying, "Pay me five grand and I'll put you on my stage to speak to two hundred thousand people, and you'll get all the exposure." Nope, mm -hmm. that ain't something that we know to do. Why? Because you don't have a pay to be featured. Not like that. Not like to speak. Mm -hmm. And say, oh, well, you'll be on the farm stage with Gary V and right, that, and that's what they're promoting those Green things now. Da, 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 da. You'll be, you got all them people, and this is what he's probably doing because they're the other people. Let me tell you something: when people want you to come and speak, they pay you to come and speak, right? Because you're worth it. Now they're, they're switching it. Yeah, doing the reverse thing by letting you know. Well, all well, these people are coming. Let's is coming, mm -hmm. right? And you're gonna get to the audience, but the audience ain't interested in you. From the beginning, because that's not who they came to see. You got what I'm saying? So one thing I've learned is that you never pay to speak. Right. Okay. You can pay a PR agent to help you get featured in different publications and stuff, mm -hmm. but you don't pay to speak. And people, it's a whole 50-50 community on that. You argue to the daffy. 
people was 50% people will say yes is worth it, 50% mm -hmm. won't. And some people say, oh, I did um, April Mason went to Rick Ross to stay in the board stop. She paid twenty five thousand dollars to be there. She said she made that four times by the time the month was over. So okay, but it depends on where you are. Yeah. yeah. So already, right. yeah, where you so are I feel already. Like, I feel like for where I am right now, it doesn't make sense. Right. But if I'm at the aspect of where I have products, right, then it makes sense. <clears throat> you even need it by then, probably. Why you say that? Because you probably would need the guidance from them by then. Right. You okay, I mean? so, so it's, it's, I like it's, how you're it's, almost, it's almost like a, it, it feeds off of people's aspiration right. to be out there. That's what it does. Mm -hmm. People that came to Black Equity want to be millionaires. Not to say that everybody that went there was desperate, but right now what it's doing is feeding off of people's desperation and encouraging them to invest in themselves. And, you know, sometimes some of them keywords that are used are. Uh, uh, um, I don't know. They catch. They they will catch people right. like you, but they won't catch people like me. And that's only because I'm work for too many coaches, and I watch how they work play and how they play on people's psyche most of all. Mm -hmm. You know, not to say it's not genuine, yeah. or it may be a, and it I may be the best thing that ever happened to you if you had done it. But I don't. I wouldn't want you to risk two thousand dollars yet on something like that. And another thing is, what a caution is: if you don't have it, don't spend it. So right now, that should come from your business expenses, right? Early, right. The second thing is, I I didn't realize, but like what you were saying, so I've seen at least two, three speaking coaches, right? One is a Christian, but actually they all seem to be Christians, right? And so what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is like the same thing for podcasting, mm -hmm. but now he's doing it for the podcasting piece. 20 minutes, post their um, connect, say things in the right way. And I think I was about to do that. So I think I'm going to... Pearl stuff definitely generate more views and likes, right? Okay. So I, I already know what my nature is going to look like for the... Um, pearl stuff because I wanna, I do wanna become a pearl instructor and that's my journey to that. But I'm not posting it yet. So um, she says, oh well, you need to. Um, I don't think you should talk behind your videos anymore. And I'm like, why? Well, she's like, wow, your voice is deep, your accent. People aren't gonna stay on your videos. They're not gonna get much views. And I'm like, well, they seem to be doing all right. I don't really look at the views. Um, but my last like pearl video I talked had like maybe 8,000 views and over 200 shares and stuff. So that was good to me. And you talked on it or no? I talked on it. Mm. So, so did last, you try doing it without talking? I did. So, uh, and then I got 286 views and that was my pill two class. Like I, I wanted everybody to see that one if I wanted anything. The other night, Wednesday night, must have been Thursday night, I remembered I never posted a pill one, the pill one video. I did that video, talk big because I did not feel like typing the text and doing the speech to text. And it was like after midnight, I talked over the video. And I just went and checked. That video has got like 4,000 something views and it's gotten, and I must have posted on Instagram first. I posted on Instagram first and then post, no, I posted on TikTok first. Right. And it got, all these views, and I was like, I'm not listening to her. I'm not listening to nobody. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they're probably like, yo, I don't feel like listening to her talk. Like, this is her explanation. And she was really trying to give me tips. People but, love you, but let me tell you one thing that I noticed about me and my brands. People love me for me. Mm -hmm. Point blank, period. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be ratchet. I'm not trying to be saucy. I'm literally just being myself. And I have to be more professional than I do. And so when I said it to myself yesterday, I was like, I don't know what the hell I don't listen to somebody else. But I really wanted to, because her page does well. Okay. And she just came out of nowhere with it. Mm -hmm. She got tons of views. Mm -hmm. But, so but does I, she do what you mm -hmm. she does very, She's very different. Okay. Very professional. No, I mean, what, what she recommended. Did you, did she do, does she do what she recommended for you? About your voice, um, no talk. She does do it, but she does a lot of the trans songs and mm -hmm. dances. I do so many dances or whatever, but mm -hmm. I don't always, I really do do what I like. I follow what I like. Mm -hmm. So if I like the song, I post that behind my video. 
or even if I know I'm doing a voiceover, I still post the song, but post the real live so that the song will still pick up on TikTok. Right. right? So people, they will still know that it's dope because when you post a video of no song, it's a hit or miss. Okay. Well, TikTok is a video. TikTok app. is a song. It's a song app. It's a song okay. app. Right. Okay. It goes off of um, mm. music. So, oh my um, god, these people know all the songs. I was, I, you know, I should start doing it and say, I don't know the words to the song. <laughs> so, I am on. Um, <laughs> you could do these two email funnels from your personal YouTube channel and the Black Accents Club. So, you start with a lead magnet, whether it's a checklist or some sort of freebie that you're going to give people according to what you talk about. And you could do a welcome email automation. I suggest three emails. The first one's gonna be, thank you for joining and have them click to subscribe because you want people to subscribe because just because they added the email to download the checklist doesn't mean that they subscribe. Um, the second email will be, here's your free download. And, but with every email, you still include other stuff. Mm -hmm. Whether your new podcast or whatever. And then the welcome to our community you can just outline what they could expect there. And again, listen to my newest podcast, check out this. If you want to reach me, um, I don't know, you don't have to do like pick your brain sessions or stuff, but if people wanted to reach you then, or if they want to be on your podcast, right. you can have the link there for the full, all of that stuff, you right. can put That's that in that. And then these people, the once they finish this step, they automatically got filtered to your general email list. So this will come from one, like say the YouTube channel, and then the other people will come from your Black Accidents um, podcast, where they'll click something from there that's brought them to the email funnel, mm -hmm. and they'll get filtered to one email. So now this side of emails, what you do there is where your newsletters come in. Okay. That's when you start educating them, talking to them, keeping them abreast. So this is just the welcome email automation sequence. But I guess that's why they call it a funnel same way. Because if people want to, they want the checklist, but they don't want to know nothing else, they're going to not subscribe, or, that, or they're going to subscribe, download, and unsubscribe. You find out what they want. Mm. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get to free stuff. Well, guys, strategy session now over. Bye. I'm not leaving yet. Jeez. <laughs> All up in my career, but um, yeah, strategy session is over, which was good. Um, definitely have a few things to do, so look forward to new emails. Email marketing, guys. Currently, that's something I need to get on. Um, we didn't get to my sister, but we'll do that another day. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to think. Stay tuned for my journey from unknown to unforgettable. Deuces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stream about from. I thought somebody called me. I meant to ask this phone about this. Yeah.